Were you surprised at all to hear that LeBron said that Steph is one of the players that he would love to team up with? Normally, you get to play with those guys like in the Olympic setting. All-star setting is a little different, but like that, to that competitive nature, you 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 want to see what other guys are like. And MJ spoke about that a lot. You know, we try to compare how MJ would deliver a message versus how LeBron delivering the message, which is it gets unfair. But MJ, you know, he spoke like I really embraced going into the Olympics. Like I got a chance to compete with these guys against them every day, but with them at the same time. And you know, uh, I learned a lot about, gained a lot more respect for a guy when I was his teammate. And, it, I don't think it takes away from his competitive nature that he would, you know, who wouldn't want to play with that guy. I, mm-hmm. I think that that's something that isn't uh, as much in a narrative as it should be with Steph that everybody wants to play with this guy. Like, this guy is such a joy to play with. And it's like, we're getting away from why we all do what we love to do is because it's a joy in it. And he brought that joy back in the basketball in terms of like, you can have fun and still be the ultimate competitor and, and still win championships and still be fierce and, and, and still, you know, you know, be locked in on your opponent and, and, and still be ready for battle every single night. People are looking at what LeBron said about Steph in a negative light, where, where he's just really acknowledging and being up front. We're like, yeah, I would like to play with this guy. You shouldn't take anything away from him as a competitor. LeBron's one of the smartest. He might be the smartest basketball mind in the history of the game. Like, I don't mind saying that. You know, I might not ever play against him again. Who knows? So now I can talk all the good stuff about him because I may not ever see him again, but I might. <laughs> but he is probably one of the uh, most brilliant basketball minds uh, in the history of the game, which is, that says a lot. That says a lot more than actually being the, one of the best scorers or the best defender or whatever. Like having that mind is is just uh, is a, is a blessing and, and he's maximized. It. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys, first round matchup, Denver Nuggets. You said something funny that my brother Mark Haynes covers you guys for the Warriors. Mm-hmm. He he brought it to my attention. He said, you heard what Dre said the other day about the playoffs? I'm like, what? He said, Dre said, well, we're either going to get bounced in the first round or we could win the whole thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, so there's, <laughs> so there's no middle ground. Tell me about the matchup you have with the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, they're they're a really talented team. You know, you got the the reigning MVP. You know, quite possibly, you know, back to back, depending on how you your guys, uh, y'all y'all the ones. That <laughs> but I will say, deservedly so. You know, the kid's uh-huh. an amazing talent, and he elevates the, the the level of play for the guys around him at a different level. Like he's unique in that he can make the guys around him deadly. When you're on the floor with him, everybody's a second option, and it makes it really hard for them to guard a well-coached, well-oiled machine. And Denver's done a good job as an organization and getting to where they want to be as a threat in the West. And the NBA is very interesting, though, because anybody can win on any given night. It used to only be like three legit teams can go to to win win it all. Like, that's all it was. Now it's like you got six, seven teams to be like, yeah, they got a chance depending on how they line up, you know, how them brackets fall. Phoenix is tough. You know, Memphis is doing some incredible things, man. Like those young guys are balling in love from the grit and the grind. They're, they're keeping that whole mantra, the grit grind, but them boys can play some ball. They're shooting the ball at the high clip. Um, and then us, you know, with Steph, Clay, Draymond, you know, we can get scary. Dallas started off slow. That 23-year-old kid over there is something different. And then you can go with... Utah, people have been talking about they have issues, but they're fifth in the West, you know, and they, they they were looking up like they could be, you know, second, third seed for a minute there, so they can get right at the right time. And then Denver, obviously, they got the MVP uh, with two big injuries on their roster. So, you know, and then you look at the Clippers, who you you don't know. They can mess around and, and, and get their two superstars back and then mess up everything. And then I'm not yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to go into the East, but obviously the East has, you know, Miami's the one seed. We keep forgetting Miami's the one seed for some reason. Yeah. That's true. Boston's on, crazy, Boston's on a crazy run. Brooklyn is scary as hell. So on and so forth down the line. You, you get Milwaukee is the reigning champions, and people don't talk about them enough. Your, your guy, Stephen Curry, scrimmage today for the first time. Did he? Yeah, that's what we was told. And this is not <laughs> I, sources, I, I should have went to practice today. <laughs> I, had, I had better things to do with my time. You didn't, you didn't go to practice, Dre. I didn't have, a, I didn't have enough time for the side hustle. Uh, so, so okay. It, it, I, had to give, I, had to, I had to put it on the back burner. No, but uh, I mean, I heard he... I heard he I heard he's, he's getting closer and closer, so I hope he's ready for us. And then when we got him, you know, that's that's deadly. You know, you try to take the positive out of everything. You know, there's positives in him not being in there, too, because we got to play A-plus basketball in order to win. Like, we got to be damn near perfect, which prepares us to be on top of our game when he does uh, come back into the lineup. You think he'll be there game one, Dre? What does your gut tell you? Uh, uh, 
I don't really have a gut in sports anymore. Like, you know, I've been doing it for a little, too long. Uh, I hope he's out there, but you know, we'll see. I think Steve spoke about it. Um, I'm not sure exactly what he said. But S- said Steve he said he's it. optimistic. Both of them, Kerr and Curry, both said they're optimistic. That yeah, yeah. Out. I'm naturally, I'm naturally a pessimist, so I won't speak on another guy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's naturally who I am. But I That's am true. optimistic that I will get uh, start getting better sleep than I've ever had before. Uh, <laughs> continue that. My guy Dre, he's here on behalf of the documentary that he's partnered with, The Quest for Sleep. Tell me about this venture. Yeah, well, uh, it was a pretty interesting, you know, partnership. I've been on this long journey. You know, I was really into the health and wellness space in terms of how do I make my longevity, you know, increase. You know, I can stop playing basketball when I choose to. You know, there's a lot of data out there that was used from uh, some metrics that when I was tracking my sleep that showed there was a performance directly correlated to how I was getting enough sleep or how much sleep I was getting. So there are financial ramifications to the sleep or lack thereof. The documentary, The Quest for Sleep, how can people watch this? How can they get in touch with this? You you can follow Quest for Sleep on uh, all social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. And uh, it's available to you. Actually helps you. and others around you to just continue to spread the information and, and learn how smart it is to get the proper sleep.